Dr. David Kimbrough, and Dr. Randall Hughes work to unlock the secrets of the inner tidal zone, where the land meets the sea. You've got the coral reefs, it's so obvious, they're beautiful, there's fish around them, but you look at seagrass and most people actually don't like it. You don't like walking on the seagrass. You like, you know, bare sand, crystal clear water. Then why are they studying it? Dr. Randall Hughes and visiting researcher Dr. Peter McCready are going snorkeling in St. Joseph Bay Peninsula State Park. Randall has been using the grass in St. Joe Bay as part of a study into understanding its decline. So in a lot of areas of the world, seagrasses are declining. And one of the things people have noticed um, prior to the declines is that the algae that grow on the blades of seagrasses, which we call epiphytes, often tend to get more abundant just prior to declines. And so we've done some work trying to understand what causes those algae to become more abundant. I've been working with Randall on seagrass ecosystems, and we believe they're one of the most important ecosystems on the earth. They act as nursery habitats for a lot of commercially important fish species. So it's estimated worldwide seagrass habitats probably support around 50% of the world's fisheries. And so as we lose these seagrass habitats, we lose the fisheries. In addition to this, they clean the water of nutrients and prevent erosion. And scientists are just beginning to fully understand one service in particular. You can capture carbon from the atmosphere and store it within sediments at a rate of about 30 times faster than tropical rainforests, which are the most powerful carbon sinks on land. And here's what's really unique about these seagrass ecosystems. They can store that carbon for thousands of years. The question is, as we lose seagrass beds, what happens to that carbon? And how might it affect global climate change? In the Grass on the Reef is funded by the National Science Foundation.